to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. It is Power Talk Friday, but I am taking a special detour on Power Talk Friday. And um, this is not quite a what would Lou do. This is an observation. We just had Luann live in the last, I guess it's about a month ago right now. And um, it was a pretty unique, fabulous, and awesome event, (laughs) if I do say so myself. I mean, I mean, and what I mean by that, and why I have no compunction to say that, is because the people that came together to create that event really delivered A, quality work. So we start with my team at Luann Nigara, Inc., who just worked tirelessly, Um, and that extended team includes Nicole Heimer at Curio Electro as well, but we have Diana and Christy and Lisa, and then, of course, Nicole. But then we have the TV production company, Perlo Productions, and then what we had is all of the contributors, all of my co-authors in the third book of the Power Talk Friday Experts, that's also out now, and also the panelists for that joined each of those co-authors for their topic. And then we had uh, four Where Are They Now segments. And so this is why I didn't feel funny saying that it was pretty unique, fabulous, and amazing because this group of people came together to make it what it was. And I am so grateful for all of them for basically bringing my vision to life. Okay. However, however, um, this past week, literally this happened on Tuesday and I am recording this on Wednesday and putting it out on the air on Friday because I just feel like it's that important. I watched a Instagram uh, what do they call a movie thingies, you know, whatever they're calling <laughs> from my daughter, Christy, who is on Instagram as at sass says, S A S S S A Y S. And Christy, as you know, I've been telling you, um, teasing it out that she's getting ready to start a podcast and it's going to be called, uh, sass says the therapy sessions we did not know we needed. I've told you, um, often enough that she has suffered from postpartum depression and this particular year of COVID has been particularly absolutely trying, uh, because she has observed strict COVID protocols. You know, it's a funny thing. I have one daughter who we meet for dinner every week. And we meet at restaurants and we do social distancing and we are careful and all of those things. But we do go out and we go out to restaurants. My other daughter, Ixnay, on that. If you want to visit her, you must get a COVID test beforehand. And so they're very, very different viewpoints. And again, you need to leave grace for everybody and the way they want to run their life. They're both grown women with children and they're making their own choices. And My husband and I, the Vin man and myself, we respect both of them and, of course, love them dearly, right? But so so the thing is, Christy, the one um, who has got the two infants, a three-year-old and a one-year-old, and has been locked down on COVID and has suffered from postpartum depression, has had a lot of um, awakenings in this last year. And she also started therapy a couple of years ago, and this has really impacted her life. And so her podcast is going to be about this. All right. But the other day, I happened to watch one of her IGTV story thingies. And she was talking about how she's come to this decision of 
maybe it's okay not to be a stay-at-home mom. Maybe it's okay to have a dual mission of being a mom and having a a business or a career. And you see, you you know, you're thinking like I'm thinking right now. Well, of course it's okay. <laughs> like, come on, right? And I'm waiting for her to explain why it's okay, right? And 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 she does explain that that it's okay, but the thing is the point of her Instagram was to share with her following how it's been a journey for her to come to this decision and how hard it's been for her to just finally say out loud, yes, it is okay for me to not be a stay-at-home mom. And she said at one point that um, she hears me in her head, which I have said to her and to any of my girlfriends that wanted to listen to me for the last you know, 40 years. I think that if you have a child, if you have one, if you, you have brought one into the world, or you have chosen to adopt a child, however you choose to have a child, um, or that child becomes in your life, then that is your really, I, I, I almost want to say your number one thing. Like we, the rest of the greater human race, rely on each of our co-parents out in the world to do right by their kids because that human's going to interact with somebody else. And you know what I always say, if you weren't raised right by your mama, like, come on, right? And so I've always felt like it was very important that I chose to have a child. I have three stepchildren and I have one that Vin and I share together. And I chose to bring that child into the world. And so all through the years, as I've had ambition for different things, it was always the push and the pull. You've heard me talk about the seasons of your life. And I will never, and I am not saying to you that I gave up things in order to be a mother. Okay, I will tell you that I consciously made choices that the child I brought into the world got the priority, got the best decisions. Okay, now, does that mean I never left her at the CYO at 10 after 8 instead of 8 o'clock pick up from basketball? (laughs) Yes, it does not mean that. (laughs) Okay, so we're not perfect in the things that we do, but. The big decisions, you know, being home after school, doing all the things that were important to me, that were criteria for me as a mother, I stuck to them when they were, whether they they were easy or hard for me to do. And so the thing is that to hear her saying, you know, I, I think I can, I, you know, it's okay to say this out loud. I want to say to you, if you're needing to say it out loud, it's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I'm waiting for her to let herself off the hook and say, and you know what? My mom, you know, she was a working mom my entire life. I, I, my mom went back to work when I was six weeks old (laughs) and I turned out pretty good, but she doesn't do that. She doesn't go down that road. And so I was like, what is that about? And then I started thinking in our entire circle of my best and closest girlfriends. So if I name six of my best and closest girlfriends, only one of them was a stay at home mom. Every other one worked. And I have to say the one that was a stay at home mom, I think worked harder than the rest of us. (laughs) I mean, she, you know, cooked every day for her kids and did the landscaping and, you know, like, whoa, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like she wasn't working. Okay. Um, she did all the really cool mom things that I used to think, wow, <laughs> I don't I don't have the bandwidth for that. And she did all the things in the house that were very Martha Stewart. I've admired her many, many years. Anyway, so my point is, though, it's not like I was like the unicorn. We all worked. And so I couldn't understand where this was coming from. And so I had to call her on my way to work. I'm like, what the heck with that lady? Like, what happened? And she said, you know, I just, I hear you. It's not that I felt like pressure from you or anything else. And she said, it's just that you see the women online who are building online empires. And, you know, whether they're a mommy blogger or they're a course content creator or whatever they are. And she said, and it just always felt like 
being a mom who worked from home, it looked like it was, she said, I'm not going to say the word easy. I, I'm not naive enough to think that anything is quote unquote easy. She said, but I've struggled to figure out how do they make it look so easy? And I lost it. I lost it. I was like, you know what? <laughs> You're a smart lady. What the heck? This is like looking at, you know, J-Lo in a magazine and saying, you know, I only ate lettuce for the last three years and I've done 9,000 sit-ups and how come I don't look like that? It's because you're not looking at J-Lo. You're looking at a magazine of J-Lo and it's been airbrushed and the boobies been taped and all the things have happened. I said, when people show up on Instagram, you know, and they talk about their wonderful life and their wonderful online business and their blogging empire and podcasting empire and, you know, whether it's a design business or a bakery business, we're not seeing, you know, the, the behind the scenes. I'm like, come on, right? And so she, you know, so we had a great conversation about that. And she understood it fully and she, she didn't argue it. And she's, she, she's smart. She knows. And she said, I hear you, but it's still a journey to get there. It's still a journey to understand that it isn't the way it always looks. And I, you know, I had a joke with her. I'm like, you had a front row seat to what it looks like. <laughs> Sometimes it was chaos. Right. And so anyway, so what happened though was, and I explained in my Insta. So now I got riled because within, it was really crazy because the Friday before, so this I think happened Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember what day it happened. I think it was Tuesday. The Friday before I had a one-on-one -on -one coaching client session and tell me how much that she appreciated being at Luann Live, but she said, I'm just going to tell you, you know, I didn't go to the second day. She goes, I went to the first day. I went to the third day. I'm really glad I did the VIP. She said, by the way, that's awesome. I'm like, I know I love the VIP day. Um, but she said, I didn't go to the second day. I said, why? And she goes, I was just too overwhelmed. She goes, there was just so much information from the first day. She said that I really was on overload. And I really just was, it was making me feel anxious about all the things that I could potentially be doing in my business. And so that was that Friday. And I thought, well, that's crazy. And I'm sorry that you felt that way and all the things. And we had a little conversation about it. And then on Tuesday morning, before this, I saw Christy's um, Instagram, another coaching client left me a message saying, I'm in a little rough spot right now. And here's what's happening, blah, blah, blah. And I have to tell you last, you know, when I was at Luann Live last month, the end of the second day at the last session, I was crying because I felt so overwhelmed about all the things that I could potentially be doing in my business. And so think about this. I'm Friday. I hear this from one coaching client on Tuesday morning. I hear this from another coaching client. On um, Tuesday, you know, an hour later, I'm watching my daughter's Instagram where she is saying, I'm finally comfortable saying it's okay to create my own way and to be, you know, have a dual mission of having a business and having, you know, the, my, my number one goal of raising healthy human beings. And I'm saying to myself, whoa, what is happening? What is happening? People are feeling like there's this ideal out there that they're not living up to. So I'm saying to you, do you think there's some crazy ideal out there that you have to live up to? No, here's what it is. There is an ideal out there that you can aspire to after you have analyzed what it is you want for your life right? So maybe somebody tickles you. Maybe you see somebody at Luann Live. You're watching Sandra Funk or Beth Diana Smith or Blanche Garcia or any one of the rock star stars talking about how their business works the way they want it to work and that they, you know, they say this to the client and they say that to the client. It's 
that's something that you are to, supposed to be inspired by and take out of it what works for you and take out of it what inspires you, take out of it what gives you an idea. But it is these, these men and women that I put in front of you on this show or in the books or anywhere else are not for you to just measure yourself against and say, eh, I'm not measuring up. That's not how this works. That's not how life works. That's not what I want for you. Okay. So the thing about it is, is that when I, when all of this happened, then I got riled and I was like, that's it. I'm going live. And you know, it takes a lot to get me to go live because I hardly ever do it. And I should do it every darn day. And I would do it every day if I don't know, I had the discipline to do it. It's just, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to do in a day. And, and so, but I got riled and I went on and I was like, you cannot put this on yourself. You cannot go to an event like Luann Live and watch nine panels, 18 amazing people who are standing there talking about their superpower and think that you are supposed to live up to that. Okay. Cause here's the thing. And this is what I said in the Instagram live. They are talking about their superpower. I specifically selected them because I personally know them and know that's their superpower. Okay. So I have certain superpowers, right? So you want to hire me to speak? You want me to, you know, do a podcast? You want me to go to come to your group? Great. But you know, you can't say to me, Hey, Luann, talk to us about finances. Cause I'm going to say you're out of your mind. Let's get Michelle Williams to do that. Right. So my point in that is, is when you see people on a panel or you see people at Luann Live or you listen to people on my podcast, these people are talking about their superpower. And why I'm hammering that is because it doesn't mean that they do everything well. I don't do everything well, right? None of us does everything well. And so I think the mistake in coming to Luann Live is thinking that everybody you see there does all the things and all of the panels with excellence. This is just not true. I know for a fact in the 650 plus interviews that I have done that many, 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 many of those people despite being able to talk very eloquently and with giving key strategies and tips and everything for the topic that we've talked about, have two or three other areas where they need as much coaching as the coaching they were given in that, that they were giving to us in that area, right? I don't require of anybody, least, least of all the people that I have on my podcast or at my events, whether it be a panel discussion for one of the markets or a panel discussion for Luann Live, I don't require them to be fully 100% superstars in every aspect of the business. And do you know why that is? Because it's not possible it's like trying to look like an airbrush model in real life. It's literally impossible. We all have gaps. We all have blind spots. I've told you a thousand times about me, Vinny, and Billy. This is the greatest gift of that window works, really, that we are, as Michael Gerber says, the entrepreneur, the manager, and the technician. I'm not the technician. If you leave me or Vinny to be the technician in our business, we would not have the repeat clients that we have because we don't have one-tenth the amount of patience it takes to be on an install for the level of install that our business requires. We do not have the patience to be on that install and deliver consistently high quality to every single client, every single day, every single year. Because Vin and I are like, let's get it done and get out. <laughs> and Billy's like, this is what I'm doing today. It is very important to me that when I leave here, it's as perfect as I can leave it, right? And so at the same time, 
if we ask Billy or me to run and manage our business, to figure out when the car payments are due and the health insurance due and the 401ks and, you know, when do we buy a building and when do we do this? We, we Forget it. Forget it. Okay? So when you run a business, whether you run a business and you're a solo or you run a business with a team of 20, you're not going to be able to do it all really well. The difference is, as you grow your business, you will hire people to do the things that you don't do well. And the difference between the entrepreneurs that succeed and the entrepreneurs that are in that bucket of whatever crazy percentage of it is of people that go out of business in their first year, okay? You know what the difference between the ones that stay in business and go on to build their businesses to whatever level their dream wants it to be? Okay, and the ones that lose it, the difference is not being excellent at everything. The difference is owning the places that you aren't excellent and not putting your head in the sand and pretending it doesn't matter and it doesn't exist and it doesn't impact your business. That's the one difference, right? Looking and understanding what you don't do well, what you don't like to do, and understanding that you either are going to buckle down and be tortured and do it, or you're going to hire somebody to do it. But the thing you can't do is pretend it doesn't exist. And I know for a fact that that's exactly what the businesses who fail do. They have their gap, whether they are the the technician and they don't know how to be the manager or they're the manager and they won't take the time to be the technician. When you ignore that gap, that's when you go out of business. And you know, the other time, the other thing that you have to pay attention to, to be one of those businesses that succeed, you have to realize what your superpower is and you have to maximize it and you have to leverage it and you have to lean into it and you have to make sure that you craft a business that your superpower has full wings. Okay. Full wings. Bring us all your amazingness. Okay. So, all right. Now I want to say after I did this Instagram live, I got an email from Natasha Jones. She literally texted me and said, oh my goodness, Lou, thank you so much for doing that Instagram. And I'm actually going to sit down and write you an email right now too. And I want to share that email with you because I think this really can help you understand that you cannot compare yourself to other people, that you have to take where you are, work on it, little by little, grow, Give yourself grace and open yourself up to the opportunities as you are able to take them. Okay. So here's the, I'm going to just read it to you. It says, hi, Lou, I'm sitting in school pickup lane thinking I want to send you an email when I get home and I can't even wait. (laughs) So I'm doing it right now. Your live today was 100% needed. I hope everyone who attended sees it, attended Luann live sees it. I know exactly what your coaching clients as well as your daughter were talking about. As a baby designer, I attended five of your panel discussions at the market, the first market I went to. I also attended a Power Talk Friday tour and Luann Live all in one year. I felt inspired, empowered, but also extremely stressed and felt less than. Hearing other designers speak of their success made me feel envious and it seemed impossible to compare to where I was in my business at that time. This was especially hard for me because every job I had had in the past, I have excelled at. So why was this not happening in my business? However, I took my time to get to know these star designers and I realized that they are just like me, but in a different time of their business. I had to work hard on this and yes, some therapy was involved as well, but I realized that you didn't only bring people to the stage to celebrate their success, but also to tell us how to get there. 
This is the reason why I said at Luann Live, if I don't talk to Luann herself, I'm going to burst. This was this Luann Live. So before that, she was talking about the one from two years ago and all of that. But at this Luann Live, she was in the chat and she said, when Sarah and Rincey were speaking on their panel, she said, I saw so many comments in the chat saying, this is too hard. This is too much for me. I'm not capable of this tech. I can't do this. And she said, and what I was trying to say is that we have all been in that point in our career. Action can be so small, but it can make a big impact on your business. Some of those designers attending didn't even have trade accounts yet. They don't even know what their revenue is. I'm telling you, I didn't know my numbers when we were at the first Power Talk Friday tour. She says, for God's sake, Sarah and I were whispering to each other at the first Luann Live, don't tell anyone we buy stuff at Wayfair. We were embarrassed to admit this to the other designers at Luann Live. I was also embarrassed to say that I work Monday to Thursday because I chose to spend one day with my kids. I thought I'd be seen as lazy or told that I'm not working hard enough. So here's the thing. Think about this. You know Sarah Brennan. I think you know Natasha too. She's been on the show. Think about where these women are just two and a half years later. Okay, two and a half years ago, feeling intimidated, feeling like they're less than. Okay, and so, so Natasha said, this time, I, oh, at first she said, any, anyway, I could go on and on, but please know that your Insta Live today will help someone. We always love it when you break down the conversation and challenge the season designers to bring us back to their beginning, right? She said, I attended this Luann Live this time with a clear head and knew what to expect, but I do remember how the first timers would have felt. Okay. And she said, and she suggested to me, I, I fully suggest in the follow-up sessions that we, you do some mindset talk because sometimes this is harder than the business strategies. And that's also what I said in the live. I said, if you, if you remember, if you were one of the people that bought the early bird registration ticket, you get three zoom accountability sessions with me. And the first one is next Thursday. Uh, I think it's, uh, March 11th. 2021 we're talking. And the thing is, of course, this was a great aha moment for me as well, because to me, I was going to go running into those Zoom sessions with you guys and be like, okay, let's see your, your to-do list. What did you get done? Now I've learned a lesson. Hello, not perfect also, right? Now I've learned a lesson. I've learned that maybe that first Zoom session, we should talk about this. We should talk about the overwhelm. We should talk about the idea that when someone throws a hose at us, we can step out of the way and wait for the puddle and pick up the water that we need. Okay. So I threw a hose at you. And if you are in your middle season or uh, the seasons part of your business, and you could sit there and take the information great and good on you. But if you are at that beginning stage of business and you left Luann live feeling less than, then my heart is breaking. That's not the point of this. The point is to gather all the best resources that I possibly can for you, put them in front of you, but for you to pick what you can use, when you can use it, and choose to work on it, okay? So it's like going into the mall, right? There's nine billion beautiful sets of shoes. You're going to walk out with a couple of couple of pairs of shoes, not all of them, right? And maybe you'll cry and whine because you really wanted another pair, but you know you'll be back. You'll be back. You're going to buy these two really, really pretty pairs of shoes and you'll go back when you have, you know, save some more money or whatever it is. So take some of the lessons, take one or two things that you can bring to your business, work on it, commit to it, make some progress on it. And when you're feeling strong and you're feeling confident and you're feeling like you've got something under your belt, go get another thing and work on it. Okay. So I had to, had to, had to do this. I had to pull the show for today. I had to put this in here because I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me to put on Luann Live, to, to do it myself. In other words, the joy it brings me for my process and my part in it, but to watch my team and watch them put it together and to watch the extended team and then to see all the faces there and to see all of the speakers sharing their hard-earned lessons and to think that 
it would make any one of you feel less than just, I can't, I cannot live with that. That's no way to, to process that. Okay. So it's like walking into the library and, and crying and being genuinely sad because you can't read 50 million books today. You just pick up the book that you want, the one that you need the most, the one that's calling you the most and take it out and read it and work on it and bring it back and take another one. So that's what I want you to do with Luann Live. If you were there, we're, the recordings will be out in another couple of weeks and we're late. I know. I'm sorry. I told you the production owner got COVID. It's, you know, the real world, right? Um, but they're coming. And so go back and say, all right, I want to work on this one segment of my business. Let me just watch just that one segment over again. Don't overwhelm yourself with all of the other eight segments. Okay. So. All righty. I have to say, I also do want to tell you that I do think Luann University is a great follow-up to Luann Live, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed, because we have so many different courses that really now are going to take six weeks and dig into each particular topic. So that is an action that I think is a great action to take. If you're feeling a little like the, 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 the ground is moving under you and you're saying, I'm feeling a little crazy, I'm feeling a little shaky, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed, then pick something, take an action on one thing and own it, right? If it's your finances, come with Peter Lang or Kat Anderson, or if it's the design build process, or if it's an email marketing sequence that you really need to be you and feel good, that you're so confident to send it out to your, your clients. You know, these are the things that we've got going on. So rather than look at 20 things, pick one thing and take an action on it, own it, make it you, make it your own, have the confidence in it and sit in it and execute in it and bring it to your business and watch the difference in yourself and in your potential clients and your current clients. And then when you've had a breath and you're ready, then you go back in and you watch another recording or you take another course or you do whatever it is the next step is. Okay. So if you're interested in Luann University, you can go to luannuniversity.com. All right, you guys, honest to goodness, just whoever you are, wherever you are at this moment, you know if you are doing your best. And if you are doing your best and you are not getting the results that you want, then just understand it might not be time. You might have to do it more right? What do they talk about? 10,000 hours for something. So, but I tell you, you have your inner voice. You know if you're phoning it in or if you're actually actively working towards improvement. And as long as you can say, I'm actively working towards improvement, then you are deciding to be excellent. And I'm proud of you for that. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.